move on next to this uh, grocery sales forecasting. I think this is a grocery stores uh, and uh, they, they have lots of items. And uh, yeah, so you see it's uh, three years ago. So that's after three years of the Roseman store data. And, uh, and I think this, uh, this one is also a very challenging one. I think uh, grocery stores, because they, they focus a lot to uh, care for the, the perishable items, right? Because in the grocery, some items will kind of go out quickly, right? So they, they uh, and they, they, they care about that in their metric calculation. So as always, let's first look at the data. Uh, so the data they provide is first the unit sales that date. So the unit sales is uh, for that store, for that item at that date. Uh, so what's the unit sale of that item at that date? And also they have the promotion column to tell whether that item is um, promotion or not. And also, of course, some store metadata of, of where the store is located, like city state type, et cetera. And also the item metadata, including the family, uh, uh, and also whether that item is perishable, such as the vegetables, right? Uh, and then the, uh, the count of sales transaction for each date uh, and store combinations. So how many sales? Uh, given a store and given that date. And they also include the oil price. That's very interesting. <laughs> For the forecast, yeah, I guess the oil price will affect lots of uh, stuff. <laughs> uh, I think some, some items will depend on the oil, oil price a lot. Uh, and then the, the holiday and the events with the metadata. And so what's that holiday? What's the events? What's the type, et cetera. So you can see that when they collect their data, it's interesting to see that they store this, uh, what additional data they store for their forecast problem. So I think the, the, the metric they design is, uh, is very interesting. At least I haven't used this kind of metric before. So it's called a normalized weighted root mean squared log error. <laughs> so, so it's a log, so it's basically a log of the relative error, right? So it's log minus is equals to log this divided by this. So it's still kind of the percentage error, uh, but it is taken log. And then it's, it's weighted, right? So for the perishable items, it given a higher weight of 1.25, while the other items given a weight of one. Uh, and also there's some articles discussion about the, this metric. And uh, they, they say that this metric incurs a larger penalty for the underestimation uh, than the overestimation. Uh, for example, if we uh, fix, I think they fix the value, fix the Y to be, for example, 500, if I remember correctly, and then they just uh, vary the Y hat say from nine, from 100 to 900, right? With respect to 500. And then they calculate the metric. And then you can see that if, if the Y hat is uh, like uh, underestimates a lot, and then the error will like increase greatly. Well, if you overestimate the error doesn't increase that much, right? So, so, they, so the metric really puts uh, lots of focus on that penalties on the underestimation. Same chart here is RMSE that we all commonly use. Well, RMSE is more symmetric and it penalizes both sides equally. I think it's very interesting to, <laughs> to look at different metric and to see like what area of focus, uh, uh, what area of uh, error it focuses on. So the first solution, well, I would say the first solution is a little bit, uh, well, it's hard to, to dig out all the details. And also the, the author say they are very lucky <laughs> to get the first phase because I think uh, they, they use lots of uh, codes that is already published on the Kaggle kernel. So, so, so they, uh, 
uh, they, I mean, the overall, uh, they, they train lots of uh, models. So they, for example, they, they train uh, uh, one model for each day uh, because in Thailand there are 16, 16 days. So they train one separate uh, light GBM. So it's also a GBM model uh, for each day. And also uh, a neural network model for each day. And also like one, one model for 16 days together rather than separately and then one uh, model, right? So uh, of course, you if you train like for each day, overall, you get a better performance, but in the end, they even like ensemble like a linear blend of the four, four models together to get, you see the improvement is actually uh, negligible, right? So just point, point there, there too. Well, but it matters to the, to the ranking, <laughs> so. So uh, then I mainly look at the first solution because I feel like this is the closest one to this. And also they put a lot of weight on the first one. And then with respect to the feature engineering, I think it shares a lot of similarity with the Roseman store uh, features, right? So of course they use some basic features like uh, categorical features like the store item, what's the item family class of the promotion, also the day of week. Uh, and of course they, again, uh, generate lots of statistical features, right? As in the Roseman store, like we have the keys and the key, key right now is the store item and item. And then we have, uh, we extract the time series within these uh, groups uh, generated by the keys, right? So we have these uh, time windows. Uh, we do the, uh, find the nearest day like, uh, actually the one, they, they shift the days by 28 days because it, it is required to, to forecast into, I think it's uh, uh, 28 days. So they do some uh, shift and then they find the last one day, last three days, last five days, uh, or, or even like two months ago, right? So they just directly extract the sales like several, like this many days ago. And then they do a equal time window and then extracts the stats within each time window. And then what stats they calculate on, they calculate on promotions, on sales, and also how many zeros uh, in the data. And then the stats they calculated, including this many, like mean, median, max, and also days since last appearance, because some items are not that frequently purchased. So there will be lots of zeros and then it extracts how many days since last appearance. And also like the difference of mean value between adjacent time windows, right? So basically again, it's very similar to those men store. So they generate lots of groups and then extract time series based on these uh, days and windows. And then for these target variables, they, they calculate all these statistics for those target variables. And of course, they also use the, uh, the holidays and they also have tried other keys such as cluster item, store family, et cetera, but they find it not that useful. <laughs> so they call it uh, useless features. Yeah, but they, they mentioned they have tried them out. On the, and then this, uh, this whole as uh, input to the light GBM model. And again, because they, they train 16, right? So they train one GBM for each day uh, in the test. Well, I, I would say it will be, uh, with, with this small gap, I don't think it's worth implementing 16 models in practice. I mean, in real model deployment, but for the competition, they, <laughs> they train 16 ways to, to get this many improvement uh, over there. Mm. Uh, another, uh, so this is one solution on GBM models. And then I find uh, lots of models, uh, they, they use the uh, convolutional neural network to do the forecasting. So that's to my surprise, and they actually get very good results with that. So the fourth place model is uh, encoder decoder with the dilated causal convolutions. And they, they claim that this, they do a good job because the causal convolutions uh, comparing to RSTM or other recurrent neural network model, it can, encode a much lo longer sequence uh, with this dilated, right? For example, uh, these uh, dots can 
by, by stacking them up, this dot can encode a very long time, time, uh, time series, right? So uh, within the, by this uh, dilated uh, convolutions. And also because it's time series, so it only use the, you know, historical data rather than, you know, an ordinary convolution that is symmetric. So, but, but for time series, it's only using the uh, historical, historical time points. So they build an encoder decoder with the, with this type of structure. And also, I think they also use a bidirectional RSTM with that. So it's a, it's a one model, uh, but with a, you know, but with a neural network model, right? But it can, you know, example different type of neural structures within that one model. So I would say still multiple models uh, within one solution. And the fifth, fifth place is also very interesting. It's, uh, it's uh, definitely another example model. So first they use the GBM models, uh, more features, the data and the peers uh, into the model. And then they use uh, CN plus DN. So the CN is a dilated causal. So it's what I introduced just now uh, of the dilated causal convolution. Uh, installed by the wave net. So if you are interested in this structure, so maybe it's good to read about the wave net. Uh, and then they use the DNN to connect to the to the uh, raw cells uh, sequences. So the DNN is directly another uh, kind of to process the raw cell sequences. And then the inputs are concatenated together with the embeddings and promotions to output to the future days, like 16 days, a uh, future days of the prediction. And then they train another RN. I think this is from another uh, structure of the Kaggle, Kaggle winning solutions uh, for the web traffic prediction, encoder and decoder GIUs. Yeah. So yeah, so I would say they 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 train kind of three types of models and do an example of them. Well, it will be hard to say like till the last minute, like how many, like at what place you will end up with. But, uh, again, uh, and it's, uh, uh, I would say like for the top 1% to, to rank at the top 1%, well, you need lots of effort, but to rank at the top 10 or top five, well, you really need some luck there. <laughs> you got because everyone were, were doing the, the, the examples are doing uh, very similar like feature engineering. Right? So it's, uh, it's hard to say till the last minute. Yeah, so I will say for this competition, again, the lesson from that is still the features are important, especially for the GBI models and people start to use uh, the CNNs uh, for, the, for, the, for the predictions. 